Hello everyone, it's me Irfan and welcome back to Turkish Lessons. It's been a while but we're back with verbs today. Um, I will be giving you guys some info about Turkish verbs and yeah, some examples, example sentences. So let's work, let's start with the first one, um, which is git. It means go. Uh, so before we start anything, I want to say that git, like uh, when you're trying to say a sentence, you add the verb at the end of the sentence in Turkish. But you don't add the verb just like that. You don't say like, uh, I don't know, I'm going home. You don't say like, ben eve git, which makes like, which doesn't make sense. So we have to add suffixes at the end of the words or verbs, whatever, when you're trying to make a new thing. Uh, so all these verbs are just in base form. So you can't make sentences with them. You can make uh, imperative sentences saying just like go, come, just like that. So just an FYI. So git, git, which means go. Then we have gal, gal, which means come. Then we have all, all which means be, but we don't use it like, you know, in English there is M is R, but we don't use that kind of grammar. So B for us is mean, means like, you know, uh, when something's happening, you know, you say like, uh, I don't know. Mm, I don't know, I couldn't find an example right now, but when something is happening, it's like happening. But not the same thing. I will tell you guys an example later with all of the words. Uh, then konuş, which means talk. Konuş. Konuş. Then we have al, which means take. Al. Al. Al also means red, but um, it's an... It's not like an old, I mean, I think it's kind of like an old word, but we use red, uh, we use kırmızı as red, but also all, but it's mostly used by like older, older people. So all means take. Then we have vaj, which means give. Vaj. Vaj. And then we have yap, which means do. Yap. Yup, but um, you you you can use yup with like you know making a cake. Um, what else can you yup? Uh, pasta yapmak means making a cake. Ödev uh, yapmak means doing your homework. Uh, something like you know preparing your uh, bag for school tomorrow means like. Chanta yapmak or chanta hazırlamak, which is a totally different verb. I will write them down at the end of the uh, lesson. So we're just like uh, just reading them. Then we have bak, which means look. Bak, bak. Then we have dinle, which means listen. Dinle, dinle. Then we have Bil, which means no. Bil. Bil. Then we have ve, which um, when you're using it, you don't say like, you know, when somebody's saying like, he said to me, or like, he's saying to me, you say, o bana diyor ki, or o bana dedi ki. So it's not just like that. So you add a suffix in it also. But like this one, there and yeah, you don't see them just like that. This is like you know you can see dinle uh, or bak or yap just like in that kind of you know base form, but you don't see de or yeah in just like that. So somebody would say like you know eat your food. Don't just say like eat in Turkish. So yeah, de de. 
There is also a suffix that can be used by itself. Uh, it can turn a sentence, like let's say, uh, ben de geliyorum, which means like I am coming to. So to in English is equals to de in Turkish. And then we have ye, which means eat. Ye, ye. Then we have çalış, which means work, but it could also mean like, you know, working as like, you know, working as a labor or, you know, working at a job, but it could also mean like, you know, studying. So when you're trying to say study, you say das çalış. Das means um, lesson. So, I mean, we, I will show you guys later study too, but just to, you know, you, got, you guys have an idea. So çalış. Chalish. Then we have Dushun, which means think. Dushun. Dushun. Then we have Iste, which means want. Iste. Iste. Then we have Söyle, which means tell. Söyle. Söyle. Then we have anla, which means understand. Anla, anla. We have oku, which means read. Oku, oku. Yaz, which means write. Yaz, yaz. Then we have alışveriş yap. As you can see here, we have yap as do so it's like do shopping but we just put it in like in that form so some verbs like yapmak etmek uh olmak kılmak etc they can get another noun before them and they will become like another verb if that makes sense i will show you guys later so alışveriş yap alışveriş yap then we have das çalış, which means study, as I say, told you guys before. Das çalış. Das çalış. This is a this is actually a sen actually a sentence. I mean, all of these bare imperative verbs are sentences, so we're just studying sentences, I guess. But this is das çalış is a sentence that you hear by your mom all the time. Then we have sor, which means ask. Sor, sor. Then we have cevapla, which means answer. Cevap means answer, and cevapla means like answer something, or cevaplamak means like answering. So cevapla, cevapla. Then we have koy, which means put. Koy, koy. Koy also means uh, kind of like a lagoon in Turkish. So it's like, you know, sea, like when sea comes inside of the land. So it's koy. Then we have yika, which means wash. Yika. Yika. This is kind of similar to English. You can say it like bulaşıkları yika, which will mean like wash the dishes, or çamaşırları yika, which, which means uh, wash the clothes. Or arabayika means wash the car. Car, sorry. Then we have kes, which means cut. Kes, kes. Then we have ziyaret et, as I said. Here we have et again, etmek. Ziyaret et means visit. Ziyaret et, ziyaret et. Then we have öl, which means die. Which is not the best word. Öl. Öl. Then we have oyna, which means play. But it can also mean like, you know, uh, dancing in a kind of way. So, I mean, you can say to your friends, like, you don't, we don't, you, we don't say like, let's go dancing when we're at like, you know, wedding party or like, you know, uh, a graduation. You can say, which means let's play 
but it means like you know dancing like you know not like uh you know a slow dance but like the turkish dances like halai or i don't know shift or something like that i don't know all the dances um or not but it also means like playing with like toys or playing computer games and all that. So oyna means play. Then we have gostar, which means show. Uh, but it's like, you know, verb version of show. So gostar, gostar. Then here we have again something with et, which means uh, yardumet, which means help. Yardumet, yardumet. Also, I just realized I, mean, I didn't realize I knew it, but like uh, et is also means meat in Turkish. So another weird word. Then we have başla, which means start. Başla, başla. And we have bitir, which means finish. Bitir, bitir. Then we have yasha. Which means live. No, it means live. Sorry. Yasha. Yasha. Then we have yuru, which means walk. Yuru. Yuru. We have kosh, which means run. Kosh. Kosh. Here, another word with et. Tekraret, which means repeat. Tekraret, tekraret, and repeat after me in Turkish is benden sonra tekraret, which we don't use a lot. Uh, we just say like söyle, which means tell. So when somebody is trying to make you repeat something, you, you can just say söyle. Uh, or you can just say benden sonra söyle, which means tell it after me. I mean, you know, it doesn't make sense in English, but this is how we use it daily. Then we have getir, which means bring, getir, getir. Then we have devamet, which means continue, devamet, devamet, again, a word with et. Then we have otur, which means sit, otur, otur. We have kalk, which means get up. It means like, you know, kind of like getting up from bed or standing up from somewhere. For example, ayak means like stand up. Yeah. So ayak means food. So you just say like get on your food. And yeah. Sorry. Uh, then we have uyu, which means sleep. Uyu. Uyu. Then we have giyin, which means we wear, you know, wearing something as the guy does in the picture. Giyin, giyin. Then we have gül, which means smile or laugh, but laugh is more like, you know, kaka, I guess. Let me write it here. Kaka means like, you know, laughing hard. You know, uh, you say like, I laughed so hard in Turkish. You say, "kakat," "gül," "kakat," "gül," "kakat." Then we have "ala," which means cry. "Ala," "ala." Then we have "unut," which means forget. "Unut," "unut." We have "sür." Which means drive, sur, sur. Um, we don't use ride in Turkish, so you know, riding a bike or riding a horse. This can also be used with sur. I will give you guys examples later. Then we have tanish, which means me, tanish, tanish. Then finally we have say that, which means watch, say that, say that. Okay, so let's move on to the examples. Let's start with git. So for example, to this word, we can say okula gittim. 
or should I say, okay, so I don't want to uh, move on with past tense. Okula gidiyorum, which means I'm going to school. So as you can see, this looks totally different from the actual verb itself. So git means go, just like go as you give someone a order. But when you make it git make, it means going. You know, I'm going somewhere. Bir yere gitmek. But when you use a verb in present, uh, simple present tense, you have to add your in the at the end of the verb. So, but it still looks kind of different than how it's supposed to look. So, let's uh, see how the root and suffixes go. So, our, the, our root is git. Then we have uh, your, and we have to add um, which is used for uh, I am. So instead of using m, we add suffix at the end of the word to make it uh, compatible with the, you know, what do you call that? We call it özne in Turkish, which means, uh, you know, I, you, we, they. Okay, let me check out the word. I'm so sorry. I don't know. But I knew it. I totally forget it. Subject. Yeah. Sorry. So make it compatible with subject. We have to add suffix at the end of the verb. For ban, which means I, we add um. So it, it looks like gitiyorum, which is really hard to say. So we have to add uh, one more e here to make it a little bit easier to say and make this t sound softer by turning it into d. I mean, this is pretty advanced Turkish, but I just wanted to, you know, show you guys why this is so different from the actual verb. So okula gidiyorum means I'm going to school. Okula gidiyorum. So here, okul means school. Okula means to school, so we the suffix e a adds to in the, the into the verb. Then yeah, we can say eve gel, which is a kind of like an order. It's imperative. Let me check if imperative is the right word. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Eve gel means come home. Eve gel. So here we have e, which is similar to this a suffix, but since this one has u, which is a hard vowel, it goes with the hard vowel. But since e is a soft vowel, it goes with the soft vowel e. So eve gel means come to home, but you don't say come to home in English, so you say like come home. So eve gel means come home. Then we have all. You can say like uh, öğretmen olacağım or öğretmen ol, which means become a teacher. It's not the same thing, but all we use it like that. Öğretmen ol or nazik ol, which means be kind. Nazik means kind. Then we have konuş, which means talk. Benimle konuş. Or benimle konuşma, which means don't talk to me. So when you add ma at the end of the word, it makes it negative. So don't talk to me. Benimle konuşma. Also, you can do this to all of this. Eve gelme means don't come home. Okula gitmiyorum, which means I don't go to school, and öğretmen olma, which means don't become a teacher, and nazik olma means don't be kind, which don't don't be kind, be kind. Then we have al, we can say elma al, which means uh, so this is like kind of similar with buying, but Okay, so I'm gonna put it here, also explain it to you, but give another 
better example for this. Kitabı masadan al. So this one here is the actual meaning of al, which means take the book from the table. Kitabı masadan al. Kitap is actually written like kitap, but you have to make it softer to add the affix. Masa means table. Masadan means from table. Al means take. So it's take the book from the table. So it means like take it from there. But elma al means like buy apple. So elma means apple. And al here means like buying something or, you know, going to market and taking them from there. So it, it actually means buying, but you can say like, Elma al, and it will mean like take apple. So it doesn't have to be like all the time. It it doesn't always mean buying something. It can mean like taking it from the somewhere, from the table, from the fridge. You know, this sentence could mean like buy an apple from the market or take an apple from the fridge. Var means give. Um, let's find another example. Anahtarları bana var. It means give me the keys. Uh, anahtar means key. Anahtarlar means keys. Anahtarları means, I mean again, keys, give me the keys. So like anahtarları, when you add ı at the end of the word, it means it's like showing something. So give me those keys. That means that. Bana means to me. So here it's ban. But when you add a, it turns to bana. I know this is so advanced Turkish, but I'm just trying to explain to you the examples. So it means give me the keys. Keys to me. Give. Give me the keys. Then we have yap. We can say ödevini yap. Which means do your homework. Ödev means homework. Ödevini means your homework. And yap means do. Or you can say çay yap. Which means uh, make tea. I mean, I don't think there's a thing like make tea, you know, brew tea. But when you say yap, it means like, you know, mm, make it happen. Uh create something and you no know, it's like i mean it's not exactly similar to english so it's really hard to teach i guess so you can say chai up cake up it means make a cake or you can say uh i don't know i can't find anything else so do is a little bit com complicated word. Then we have buck, which means look. Uh, you can say bana bak, which means look at me. But it usually means like somebody's angry at you and they say bana bak. If somebody says bana bak to you, that means that they are angry. So be careful with them. So it means look at me. Or kitaba bak, which means look at the book. Again, it seems like somebody is angry, maybe your teacher. Uh, so, bak means look. Dinle means listen. Music dinliyorum means I'm listening to music. Or music dinle means listen to music. So, again, I was trying to show you guys the difference between simple present and imperative. Music dinliyorum, music dinle, or beni dinle means listen to me. Uh, yeah. Then we have bir. Uh, you know, no is usually we use it like I know something. So ben uh, İngilizce biliyorum. So it means I know English. I know English. So this is simple present tense. That's why we have your. Or you can say, uh, 
yazmayı biliyorum. Which means I know how to write. So we don't usually use it like uh, I know, like we don't say you know, biliyor musun, a lot in Turkish. But uh, so this is not all the time in daily language. I don't know if that makes sense to you. But we use no to ask someone if they know something, like in the literal meaning. So we have the, which means say, but you can't say like say something. I mean, you can say like say something, which means bishay de. Bishay means something and de means say. But you can say like sana diyorum. Oops. Which means I'm saying it to you. And this again means somebody is angry at you. They're like, bana bak, sana diyorum. Which means, Look at me. I'm talking to you. I'm saying it to you. It's an angry conversation. So that, or in books, you know, there's some sentence saying like, uh, I don't know. Marketten. Elma al dede. So this is in, let's say, somebody said, buy apples from the gro- from the market. You can add dede here, which means like said. So it means past tense of say. So it's like, marketten elma al dede. Marketten elma al dede. So it means he or she told me, I mean, no, not told me. I mean, again, told me. If there is no uh, quotes there, you can use it as like, he told me to buy apples from the market. But if there's quotes, you, you can say like, buy apples from the market, said. He said the man, you know, like in English. Buy apples from the market, said the man. So, did you mean say? Then we have eat, yemek ye. Which means eat food, but if you just say eat, it also means yemek ye, because you can't eat anything else. Uh, but what what else can you say? Salata ye, which means eat salad, and it goes and on. Eat bread, sal- ekmek ye, yemek ye, salata ye. I don't know. Meyve ye, which means eat fruit. Then we have chilish. Uh, ben okulda çalışıyorum. Which means I am working at school. But this means as like I am either a teacher, a principal, I don't know, uh, a clean cleaning person, uh, you know, maybe a cook. So this is like as a job. Uh, so this could be like ben ofiste çalışıyorum. It means I work at an office. Then we have düşün, which means think. Onları düşün. Oh, okay. Suddenly I teach in English. Onları düşün means think about them. It's again kind of like a imperative sentence. Then we have iste. Ben su istiyorum. Which means I want water. Ben, I want istiyorum. Su, water. Ben, su istiyorum. You can use it as like uh, Ben, uyumak istiyorum, which means I want to sleep, which is mood. Uh, or Ben, mm, konuşmak istiyorum, which means I want to talk. And it goes and on. Then we have söyle, which means tell. But you can say, uh, tell tell me a story, because with söyle, you say it with anlat, anlatmak, which is totally different word than anla. Uh, okay, so it's that complicated. So let me give an example for söyle. Bana adını söyle, which means tell me your name, or bana şarkı söyle, which means sing to me. So, şarkı söyle, 
it's I mean it's not a word, but uh şarkı söylemek means singing. So there is no only one verb for singing in Turkish. So şarkı söylemek means singing. Then we have anla, which means understand. Beni anla, which means understand me. But if you use the verb anlat, which means tell or uh, I don't think there is a like literal literal meaning of anlat in ter- English. Uh, so you can say like bana masal anlat, which means tell me a story, or mm, bana bunu anlatır mısın, which means can you tell me this? But it means like let's say uh, you don't understood something in maths, and you go to your friend and say. Bana bunu anlatır mısın? Or bana bu soruyu anlatır mısın? Which means, can you teach me this question? Or can you tell me this question? So it means like, can you, you know, teach me how to do it? Can you tell me how to do it? You know, this is like, I don't think there is a literal word, like, thing in English for that word. Then we have oku, which we can say kitap oku, which means read book or gazeta oku which means read newspaper. Then we have yas, which means write. You can say hikaya yas, which means write story. I mean, in English, you you usually say like write a story, but we don't say bir hikaya yas, which means a means, I mean, bir means one. So there is no Turkish word for a. So we just say, if we want to say like write a story, we say, Bir hikaye yaz, which means write a story, as I said. But we don't usually use it if we just mean to one one thing. So we just say hikaye yaz, elma al, which means buy apple, buy an apple, like that. Then we have alışveriş yap, marketten alışveriş yap. Uh, I don't know. I think I forgot how to write. I'm sorry. Marketten alışveriş yap means do shopping from the market. Market and alışveriş yap. I mean, I don't think this is like do shopping from the market makes sense in English, but it means like go to the market and do shopping there. Then we have das çalış, which means study. I mean, it's already a sentence, but anne das çalış dede. So here we have de. I was trying to explain it at the first time, but I think we should we can work on it again. So annem ders çalıştı means my mother told me to study. So annem ders çalıştı da. Then we have sor, which means ask. Bana soru sor. You can say it as ask me a question. I mean, it doesn't make sense a lot. This is life. Bana soru sor. Ask me a question. Or bana sor. You can say just. Which means ask me. Sor. Then we have cevapla. Sorumu cevapla. Which means answer my question. Sorumu cevapla. Soru means question. Sorumu means my question. Then we have call. Uh, what I can say, what can I say? Uh, uh, okay. I can't find a word, you know, except book, apple. Let's say, big oraya koy. It means put the computer there. So oraya means there. Bilgisayar means computer, but oh, I read it wrong. Yeah. Bilgisayar oraya koy means put the computer there. Or you can just say bilgisayar koy, which means put the computer. Then we have yuka, as I said, bulaşıkları which means wash the clothes. No, wash the dishes, bulaşıkları yıka. Çamaşırları yıka, which means wash the clothes. Arabayı yıka. 
which means wash the car or bebeika, oh. which means wash the baby. So, uh, I mean, like in English, you say give bath to baby, but we say bebeika, or you can just say kediika, which means wash the cat. This is how we use it. Wash the cat, not cats. Then we have kes, which means cut. Uh, kill the kes, which means cut the paper. So the actual word, word is kill, which means paper. Kill the kes means cut the paper. So kill the u uh, here is the to show it. Then we have ziyaretet, ayrin ziyaretet. Which means visit your family. Aile means family. Aileni means your family. Visit your family. Then we have ur. Uh, I don't want to use a sentence with that, but like ur means just die. We can say, I don't want nobody to die. Kötü adam öldü, which means bad guy died. Kötü means bad. Ada means guy, öldü means died. So it's a past tense sentence. So kötü adam öldü means bad guy died. Then we have oyna. Uh, benimle oyna means play with me as like play the toys with me or let's go to the stage and let's show our moves and dance. So it means benimle oyna means like play with me. And we have gustash, which means show. Um, I don't know. Kimlini gustash, which means show me your ID. Kimlik uh, means ID in Turkish. Uh, yeah. Kimlini gustash, show me your ID. So kimlik is the actual word. Kimlini. Kimliin means your ID. Kimliini, you know, showing this is your ID. Show me your ID. So, like, I mean, we add E, E, A at the end of the words to make it obvious, like this one, if that makes sense. Yardimet means help. Bana yardimet means help me. Bana means to me, actually. Like, me means ban. To me means bana. Help to me is the exact translation. Then we have başla. You can say sınav başladı, which means exam started. Sınav means exam. Başladı means started. Started. Whatever. Sınav başladı. Then we have bitir, which means finish. Uh, yemeğini bitir. Which means finish your food. Then we have yasha. So it means live, but i yasha means bless you. So this is not about live. I just want to give you that. Or uh, Istanbul'da yaşıyorum means I'm living in Istanbul. Istanbul means Istanbul. Yaşıyorum. I, um, is here. Right now, yaşıyorum. So, your means am. Yasha, mak means yaşı. It became here, but it means live, living. Yürü means walk. Her gün okula. Oops. means I walk to school every day. Then we have walk around, which means kosh. Hemen eve kosh means run home immediately. Ev means, as I said before, home or house, whatever. Hemen means immediately and kosh means run. Tekrar means repeat. We can just say, 
Benden sonra tekrar et. It means repeat after me. Benden sonra tekrar et. Demiye getir. Which means bring. Çanta mı getir? Which means bring my purse. Çanta means purse. Çantam means my purse. Again, ı to show it. Çanta mı getir? Demiye devam et. Uh, oynamaya devam et. You know, keep playing. It's something uh, my mother keeps telling me all the time as I keep playing computer games. Uh, oynamaya devam et means keep continue playing. Uh, but I mean, I think it's not the same. But continue is not the same as like you know when something is stopped and you say continue. It doesn't mean the same thing. So in Turkish, when you're trying to say keep playing or keep doing something, you say devam et. So it's not the same meaning as continue. Demiye otur. Yerine otur. It means sit down to your place. So yer means place. Yerin means your place. Yerine means again, show, to show it. Yerine otur means sit down to your place. Kalk means get up. Ayağa kalk means stand up and yataktan kalk means get up get off from the bed or yeah but there is no actual use of get up i guess i mean get up also means waking up no no i don't think so then we have uyu which means sleep çocuk uyuyor which means kid is sleeping Uyu, your here makes it present simple. Çocuk means kid. Then we have giyin. Üstünü giyin. Uh, it literally means wear your top. But üst means like top. Alt means bottom. So üstünü giyin means like wear your top. But it actually means like wear your clothes, your whole thing. So it just doesn't mean like, you know, wearing a t-shirt or something. So üstünügin means wear your clothes. Gül means smile, kahkahat, you know, laugh. Uh, I don't know. The, those are all pretty obvious, I guess. Ağla means cry, bebek ağlıyor. Baby is crying, bebek means baby. Unut means forget, şifrem unuttum means I forgot my password, which I usually say like once a week. So, şifrem unuttum means I forget my password. Oh. Yeah, that's how we write it. Şifre means password. Şifrem means my password. Then we have sür. We can say, arabayı sür. Bisiklet sür. Or ata bin. So this is different, but also same. So I will tell you guys about it. Arabi sur means drive the car. Bisiklet sur means drive the bicycle. Ata bin means ride a horse. But binmek means riding. It's the actual translation of uh, riding. So like we don't say bisiklete bin. I mean, you say bisiklete bin, but when you, bisiklete bin, when you, it means like you just get on the bicycle, but you don't ride it. So, bisiklet sürmek means riding a bicycle. Bisiklete binmek means getting on the bicycle. I, I, I think at sürmek is also actually like something same, similar to it. So, ata binmek, just getting on to the horse. At sürmek means riding the horse. Then we have tanış, which means me, uh, yeni arkadaşlarla tanıştım. Means I met with new friends. Yeni means new. Arkadaş means friend. Arkadaşlar means friends. Arkadaşlarla means with friends. Tanış means me. Tanıştım is the tanıştı. Uh, to makes it past tense. Tanıştım makes it I met. So, yeni arkadaşlarla tanıştım. 
means I met with new friends. Say that television. Say that which means watch TV. Television. Say that television means TV. Television. Say that means uh, watching. So again here. Here's an interesting thing. So seir means oh, seir means like doing sightseeing, like seeing. Not exactly the seeing, but it's like an old word for, uh, you know, just sitting and looking at something. Uh, when you look at it, just you know, have fun and all that. It means like seir. When you add et seir et seir et mek, which again I told about et a lot today. So it becomes together and it becomes salient. Uh, I think that makes sense. So this is all I prepared for today. And thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope to see you guys next time. Okay, bye.